Hi there, welcome to my latest video. In this video, I talk about what it means to me to build a diversified portfolio. Now, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. But sometimes that doesn't work. Well, it, 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 the first time I noticed it hasn't worked was last week. Uh, a, a few people said I didn't get your video. I didn't get it either uh, via, via my test email. So uh, what I'm going to be doing, uh, a good way of getting the video, if you don't get it uh, via YouTube, is uh, click my link, which is uh, you find a link below this video on YouTube, show more information just below there you'll see a little link there and it says subscribe to my email newsletter and if you subscribe to that you'll get it via email there and also by the way i'll be sending out an email uh, very soon on a pet project of mine and also uh, probably end of uh, this week coming up a new stock i've been researching and buying a little bit of i like it it's a new sector now if you want that uh, then subscribe of course by the email newsletter link or just on youtube but uh, it's best probably to do the email because uh, like i said last week the video didn't go out to subscribers on youtube so check that out okay let's get into it okay here's the boring bit Anything you hear or see in this video is not investment advice. It could be absolute rubbish. Please do your own research. This is what it means to me to build a diversified portfolio, okay? Don't think number of stocks. Think sectors. And because uh, people think the more stocks you have, the more diversified. But listen, the more you dilute potential returns, I've covered this previously in another video. In fact, I'll put the link up up here. Uh, you don't need more than 10 stocks. You know, it becomes unmanageable. Uh, and really, the more you have, of course, the less you have, the more risk, but more reward. And so it depends upon your, your, you know, how comfortable you are with risk and reward. But I think anything more than 10, you're really diluting uh, the potential returns you're going to get. Uh, but like I said, don't think number of stocks if you want to diversify. Think sectors, all right? And not just any sectors, but hot sectors, okay? And I go through my portfolio. It's not perfect, but uh, I've hopefully got a, you know, a, a, a nice diversification there. And, um, and you, I, I'm, I, you know, for my portfolio, I think of sectors in trends or mega trends, because uh, a rising tide lifts all boats, and all companies exposed to a mega trend will do well, pretty much. Obviously, some will do better than others, but the trend is your friend. Never forget that. It's easy to forget that. But look at things that are going to be in trend, not just for six months or a year, but three, five, ten years, maybe. You know, like mega trends are things like um, you know the internet, electricity. Cars, automobiles, when they first come out, those are mega trends. If you can find something like that and a company could expose that, you'll do very well, okay? So, what's a mega trend? Right now, I think we've got a mega trend in electric vehicles. I think it is a mega trend. Uh, and I, c I can see it around for at least, you know, 10 years. And we're just sort of starting off um, from a low base here. And, uh, of course, there's been some moves made by certain stocks. Let me look at Tesla and QuantumScape. But... Uh, you know, this is why it's good to get into this trend because it's going to do very well over the next uh, few years there. And uh, if you look at this trend, this is 2020, pretty much what we got here. Um, there's a million vehicles, by the way. Uh, this is going to be, what, 30 million here? Up to uh, 10 times that in 2030. Within 10 years, they're going to get 10 times that. And you see the gigawatts of power needed, look, going from here up to here, pretty much from 520 um, gigawatts to, uh, what's it, 10, gig 10 megawatts, is it? So, yeah, you go yeah, so uh, it'll be basically uh, you know, 9,000 gigawatt hours, okay, um, as opposed to 526. So um, it's going in the right direction. Global electric vehicle market expected to register a compound annual growth rate of 40.7% from 2020 to 2027. That is huge for an industry. Compound annual growth of that. Uh, more electric cars were sold last year in the UK than in previous decade. These are things I've tweeted out, by the way. And, um, of course, it's from a low base, but still, already... The uptick is happening. Exponential growth is happening in electric vehicles. Okay, and within that as well, they written the solid-state battery is the battery of the future, and that's going to grow. Uh, compound annual growth thirty-four point two percent, up to four hundred eighty-three million by twenty twenty-eight, and that's why I'm investing in these two companies here. So Ilica. And track-wise as well, I've done two videos. In fact, you can see them uh, right there. They'll be up on the, on the top right of the screen there if you want to look at the videos there. But these are very exposed to that industry. Not just that, but other industries. But, um, you know, they're right, right in the heart of it. This is why they're a bit more hyped, a bit more overvalued than or highly valued in track-wise. But track-wise also got a, a, pretty much a £38 million contract uh, with an OEM 
AV play uh, car producer there. So, you know, very exposed to that trend there. All right, so that's, that's EVs, one of the biggest trends around. I don't advise anyone to get exposure to that. Um, gaming, esports, another massive trend happening. It's been speeded up, you know, sped up, accelerated by the lockdown, but it's always happening. And in fact, someone on Twitter said, isn't this just a blip? I said, if you're saying that, you don't have kids. Kids love it. They do not watch terrestrial TV. All they watch is gaming. They want to play games or they're watching guys playing games. Um, the global esports market size is expected to reach 6.82 billion. That's 24.4%. Whenever you get double digit growth here, um, you know, it can be growth. That's good. And uh, UK games market, this is recently exceeds 4 billion for the first time. The digital games business in the UK was so big last year, it was worth more than the entire video market and twice as much as the music market. So you see how big this is. Um, eSports has been named as a full medal event for 2022 Asian Games, a major step towards mainstream for sport that has long harbored Olympic ambitions. So you can see there, it's getting mainstream adoption. And in fact, still, it's, it's, it's almost like a silent giant. It's still massive. In fact, recently, uh, this weekend, I've seen the BBC iPlayer now uh, 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 televising um, through eSports. And you think, yeah, they're trying to grab that younger audience. The younger, the younger audience are not going to watch it on, 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 on iPlayer, I don't believe. Um, uh, Gfinity is my holding here. Uh, we're back and we're going to go in 2021. Uh, 2020 was a year that saw Gfinity work across projects with the likes of F1, E Premier League, Red Bull, uh, Tree Ball, Cadbury. So all the big names there. Um, special year for Gfinity Digital Media, which 110 million total users visit GDM sites, including returning users, who work with Treebo, Cadbury's, Acer, and Codemasters. Acquisition of Epic Stream boosted social reach to 65 million, bring on 2021 and E-Premier uh, Sports League's bag. So they work with all the big guys. They've got three sections to their business, of course, that is hosting um, you know, for, for, for e-sports events for uh, sports rights holders and publishers. Plus they have their own uh, events. And of course, they've got Gfinity Digital Media. So I quite like that. And still valued around, what, 30 million market cap that's nothing this is going to be in a big trend for like three to five ten years it's only going to get it's never going to stop is it you know computer games are getting better faster and uh kids are getting into them earlier you know um next real estate in this country we're a, we're a nation of homeowners look at this chart let me move my head down here Homeowners account for 65% of the market and the average house price has increased over the last 40 years by 1,124% from 20,000 to 245,000. Everyone in this country is going to want to own a house. If they don't, then they're going to be looking for a house to let. Will they be doing that? Online portals. You know, there's only, what, I'd say three dominant ones. There's always new ones that news come out. But to grab the market share, you have to spend a lot of big bucks. Uh, on the market's been doing that, and it's getting traction. But even now, I mean, I'm sure On the Market will be coming out with um, figures soon. But Rightmove has recorded his busiest ever start to a new year, and site visits were up to 30% on the same period in 2020. And I say here, this should mean also the same for On the Market. Uh, even the SP is at the moment is showing a dip. It's what's called a, a peak on the weekend, a drop opportunity, I think. I believe there because the share price has dropped but this is one of the busiest times of the year and I think um, I know there's been um, you know rate relief on, on uh, stamp duty relief and I think that'll be extended uh, beyond March there's a lot of rumours about that so um, this is never going to stop maybe little blips but have you ever known house prices go down no and because they're an online portal of course even if they're busy on the letting side that's good so um December month, six consecutive months of property price increase across the UK as a result of housing market boom. There's always a housing market boom. People want to own a house. It's one of the best performing assets you can own for you know the mainstream audience there, public, Joe Public, and so they always want to own a house. Um, and this is the, the late, latest trading update they had uh, on the 14th of December. Results uh, expected to be no less than 22.5 million. This is 20% revenue growth despite the lockdowns that happened. 20 and their adjusted operating profit notice from 1.5 this is a turning point in on the market they've spent a lot of cash to get where they are over the last several years and now inflection point when they're starting to generate cash and starting to make a profit it's starting to become a proper business and it's growing faster on a percentage terms than any other um sort of portal um in a right move of course a lot bigger more like 60 times the value of on the market but on the market is creeping away there it's chipping away uh estate agents conversion this is very important 
And you have to understand this. They already have agents signed up. They just have to convert quite a few of them to make significant gains. So the revenues are 22.5 million divided by 14,000 state agents. Right move have about 18, 19,000. So not far off what they've got. Right move charges about 1,000 pounds on average per month to an agent. At the moment, if you divide the 14,000 agents that on the, on the market has, then you get 133 quid a month. That's a, what, an eighth of what right move charge plus on the market, you know, 65% of the shares are owned by estate agents who are very loyal to on the market or more loyal than they are to right move, of course. Uh, so they would only need to increase this to £160 per month for 20% growth. And they're, they're, they're aiming, their average is aiming for £300 a month. So double that, okay? Uh, but also, if they convert to 10,000 to full-paying contracts, and they're not all on full-paying contracts, some of the um, stages were, you know, given sort of uh, low-fee or free introductory uh, in tests, uh, you know, adoption or, you know, trials for on the market. And so they convert 10,000 agents, and they've got about, I think they've got about 6,000 on full-time, or a bit more than that, full-time, um, and some on a lower wage, some on free. But if they converted uh, to 10,000 paying full paying contracts, that would be 36 million in revenue next year, or 6% growth in revenue. So they don't have to do a lot to keep this figure in double digits, you know, don't have to do a lot at all. Uh, Medtech, this is the next hot area of trends. Polarian, um, the events of last year have made it clear that health providers require medical technologies to deliver smarter, more efficient care. This is always going to happen. You know, tech is going to be at the forefront of great strides in you know, diagnostics and analytic tools used in, in medicine and uh, op operations. So med tech is very important. You know, we just strive to you know, keep people healthier for longer. It's always going to be at the forefront. Uh, and so um, if you look at the size of this market as well, it's massive. 457 billion US dollars medical technology uh, revenues. Um, global medical technology growth, 5.5%. Of course, that's quite big considering it's that big. And 31 billion uh, in R&D spending. So a huge amount there. And uh, MedTech's just the organic growth uh, still grown by sort of 10%. And earnings growth of 24.8%. So very profitable and growing very quickly. And as far as Polarian is concerned, uh, some big news coming up. Look, but they said uh, the group operates in an area of significant unmet medical need and the group's technology provides a novel diagnostic approach offering a non-invasive and a radiation-free function imaging platform which is more accurate and less harmful to the patient than current methods and of course we'll end this year they'll be commercializing this tech they're a hundred million market cap and like I said if they get uh, less than well, just one percent of the market they're a multi-billion pound company and why wouldn't Hospitals around the world upgrade their tech so they can actually look at people's lungs properly. You know, uh, it's a hundred thousand times better the image they get from this tech than current tech, and current tech is also harmful. So, to me, it's a no-brainer. In, in in America already, hundred and fifty billion dollars are spent, um, you know, on pulmonary disease. You know, so it's a big uh, area there. Leisure tech. Now, this is the last one, and I, I say tech because not a lot of people know this. They think it's not tech. It is though. And I'll tell you why. Um, leisure is a big area. Um, you know, it's the second biggest number of employees in the country, uh, percentage of total here, uh, UK jobs, 8.8%, um, 2.6 million people. Look at the money spent here. Uh, this is throughout all leisure, restaurants, food, restaurants, it's 117 billion in the UK alone, that's all. So it's a massive area, you know, um, and I suppose... Uh, where is it? Recreation activities, 4.8 billion. That, that's where escape and fits in. Now, if you look at where money is going as well, big uh, report undertaken in 2017 that consumers are increasingly opting for experiences rather than stuff. You know, there's this uh, whole push on stop buying tat, landfill. It's no good for the environment. Experiences are better for you and the, uh, better for the environment, and they're also better for your happiness. Uh, and if you look here, experience related, look, 6.3%, and everything else is their total services, uh, total goods, 1.6%. This is their annual s personal spend growth. So uh, experiences are growing very quickly, um, in fact, four times faster than on just stuff, uh, experiences, uh, exper experiential spending. Um, this is an article from The Guardian. Get me out of here. Why escape rooms have become a global craze and they're going mainstream. Um, and of course, 
if you look at this, there's pretty much all major entertainment companies with significant intellectual property are looking at escape rooms. And if you look at Escape Hunt, they've got uh, deals with uh, Doctor Who, of course, and Netflix. It's a good way for you know companies with uh, sort, of, uh, sort of branding, good branding there and, and, and IP there to get their, their branding into these escape rooms. Um, and the reasons why I like, um, and I say leisure tech, because there's a lot of tech involved, not just escape rooms, but uh, most of the rooms are run by computers and um, there's VR in there. And of course, there's the digital gaming side of it, which has uh, grown very quickly in a short space of time. And I think that is probably the jewel in the crown there. But this is eight reasons why I think Escape and has ex- excellent potential this year. And of course, this is a leverage play on the opening of the economy, which is going to happen. Vaccines are rolling out. It, 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 coronavirus will be like the flu. Have a vaccine if you're vulnerable, but the economy will be opening. And I think it will be opening within the you know, next month or so. And when that happens... Leisure, hospitality, travel stocks will rally very strongly. But the reason why I think Escape and especially is it super leveraged the open economy. And in fact, it, the, the, the sort of, um, it'll be a reason to buy this will be the opening economy. But they don't have to rely on the open economy because they're now the digital side. So I think people will catch on to that. But they're only 12 million market cap, right? Uh, leisure will rebound strongly once hospital admissions start ticking down to vaccines. Growth in the nine weeks to March the 1st, revenue from owner operator side. Uh, grew about 65% could be at the same period in 2021 so they're growing very quickly they are growth they're small um, they're in the right sector to rebound their sites so while we've been locked down they've been busy opening new sites anyway so their physical estate site has grown by 36% bigger than it was pre-COVID they had I think what 10 sites when when lockdown happened now they have 15 sites uh, no in fact 11 and now 15 I think in fact the, 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 the 11 is just about open but it's closed locations they acquired better prime location sites on cheaper terms they've been taking advantage of the lockdown because commercial landlords are desperate for com- uh, customers and uh, for tenants in their property so that they've got some very nice locations uh, at these high footfall areas a premium brand like I said agreements with BBC uh, for Doctor Who and Netflix for Nola, uh, Nola Holmes not all companies have this in, in the escape room thing and it, this is going to be a consolidation of this industry there's lots of one part players like happened with bowling say 25 years ago lots of independence uh, in the end you know, the market isn't big enough for everyone, but the biggest and best and most well financed because they're listed will survive. Having a listing, giving them you know better access to capital will help them grow faster, as they've been doing. And if you imagine all these, you know, sort of um, owner operated sites that have one or two. Now, when they're locked down, they had no cash to expand, essentially, to take advantage. Luckily, Escape Hunt, a well timed placing, raised four million pounds so they can carry on expanding during the lockdown, and that's happened. Digital, it's a very exciting area. Uh, it's flying, it's low cost, high margin, and globally scalable. And home games, print at home, especially now during lockdown, are doing very well, apparently. So there's many arms to this. But um, I want to look at the digital strategy because this is leisure tech now we're moving into, and this will give the company a higher rating when people sort of catch on to it. Uh, it surpassed all expectations in December, and it said offsetting the reduction in site revenues resulting from temporary closure of a number of company sites. So it regard the development of digital and role play, uh, strategically important for long-term growth of the company, providing ability to target new customer segments and build a strong B2B brand. And I said that this one game they had, they had uh, 347 people in 57 games. That's the equivalent to the entire estate, physical estate. A digital game this was, remotely from uh, you know sort of one of the places uh, one of their sites they hosted a game for 57 teams for 347 people one game the margins are better it's globally uh, scalable uh, and I said let's unlimited players play from anywhere in the world five star virtual experiences they got VR as well so it's tech it's leisure tech it's very scalable head to head games um, so you know very exciting so just as, as, a, as, a, as a summary kind of thing this is what I have Electric vehicles, real estate tech, leisure tech, med tech, esports and gaming. There's one here I want to fill in. I'm going to be filling that in very soon. Uh, like I said, there is a link below the video and um, to my email newsletter. Sign up to that and you'll get that. Hopefully, maybe next week. I'm going to do some more research. I have to compile a presentation on it and I'll hopefully get the video out uh, next weekend. All right, so hit that uh, subscribe button. No, I mean, hit that link. I mean, fill the link in and then your name and your email address. I don't. I only email it once a week, so it's not going to be spam. But hopefully I'll fill in another hot sector here.
uh, to diversify my portfolio. When diversification, you know, as far as diversification is concerned, think sectors, hot sectors, not number of stocks. Thanks for watching. Much less appreciate us for that if you stayed this long. And like I said, uh, below this video, uh, if you haven't subscribed to YouTube, do that. But uh, below this video, in the information bit, there's an email newsletter link and uh, I'll send out my video about that as well and also I'll be covering a new stock this week that I think it's going to be very hot it's going to do very well you know I've done a bit of research on it I like it I'm, I'm scaling in slowly haven't got a lot of stock yet but I'll be covering that and uh, and sending the news out on that uh, this week once I compile the sort of research there so if you want that in your inbox uh, get to that newsletter or maybe just hit the subscribe button and notification bell but I can't guarantee It'll work via YouTube because it didn't last week. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, much as appreciated. You can, you can subscribe there and uh, some more videos there. Thanks very much.